Um, what are some challenges or obstacles you've had to overcome in your basketball career? So, I guess one of my main struggles was just confidence in myself. Um, I was always getting awards and stuff throughout like high school and then um, going into Gonzaga, especially after that first workout, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not the person that everyone thinks I am, or the basketball player. And so, just um, just finding confidence in myself and just knowing my place on the team. Okay, coming out of Ellensburg, how's the talent been like supportive and on your back throughout the whole ride? It's been phenomenal. Um, coming from, I mean, I'm lucky to come from such a small community. You know, everyone, um, everyone knows each other, which wasn't always a good thing, but it is for athletics. So, um, just, I've had tons of support. You know, there's always people coming over for the games. Um, just the past couple of years with with our success, I've gotten so many messages and emails and. Facebook messages just from people that I didn't even know knew I played basketball anymore. So the support has been awesome. How did you adapt from a small 2A school to a much bigger city in D1 basketball? Just going into Division One athletics, like my first workout, I was walking back from my dorm and just thinking like, holy cow, I'm not cut out for this. Like, <laughs> it was so hard that I didn't think that I was um, going to be capable of doing it. When you're waiting in Connecticut at the draft, what was going through your mind when you're waiting to be selected? How was that atmosphere and stuff? It was. It wasn't actually that bad in the studio, just because um, everyone was pretty anxious, you know. So we were all just trying to trying to relax. But um, I was tired of sitting. That's for sure. My dad was kind of complaining about that, and I had to remind him that we were at the WNBA draft. So it's just kind of expected. But um, just anxious, you know, excited. Um, I wanted to get up and walk around, <laughs> but we couldn't. You know. It was just, it was very exciting and just an experience that I never thought I'd be a, be a part of. What are your expectations going into preseason? Um, I just just personally want to give it everything I've got, you know, because um, if I if I don't make the team, then I'll never get this experience. I'll never get to try out for the WNBA again. So just going in and doing you know whatever I can. I feel like I'll be a freshman in college again and. Um, kind of all the dirty, dirty work, um, you know, just staying late and going in early and just constantly working hard because you can be cut at any time. They can send you packing at any moment. So um, just, you know, not regretting my, my time. Uh, what do you expect in the future? In my future, I just want to continue to play basketball for as long as it makes me happy. Um, you know, once it's once I'm not happy playing basketball, then I'll stop and um, hopefully get married and uh, have kids. And I want to go back and get my teaching degree and um, teach special ed. So once I'm done playing basketball, I just want to have a normal life. <laughs> find out who the Ellensburg boys basketball team will play this weekend during regionals. Also, find out what senior sparked the Bulldogs to a series of wins. We'll be back in 90 seconds. That's right, Macy. GNAC championship or bust. With the team return of many key players and 30 incoming freshmen, the Central Washington University football team has high expectations entering next season. I had the chance to meet up with head coach Blaine Bennett and discuss next year's football season. With 10 returning starters on the offensive unit, the team will have the experience and talent to compete for a GNAC title. The defensive unit under new coordinator Malik Roberson has depth along with the re-energized secondary. The most important piece of the puzzle will be the return of fifth-year senior quarterback Ryan Robertson. Robertson is coming off a dislocated hip that caused him to miss the final four games of the season last year. In the annual Crimson and White Spring game, Robertson appeared to be fully recovered. Robertson completed 9 of 14 passes for 150 yards and two touchdowns. Senior receiver Anthony Spain has high expectations as well. I want to make the playoffs. I want to be on a winning team, and I want to liven up the atmosphere here on campus. The football team will begin practice on August 10th in preparation for their first game at Texas A&M Kingsville on September 1st. The Ellensburg High School baseball team will travel to Yakima Saturday for the first round of the state baseball tournament. The Bulldogs will hit the field at 1 p.m. against the Blackhawks from Cheney. EHS is coming off an 8-2 victory over East Valley Spokane in last weekend's regional playoff game. The winner of Saturday's 1 p.m. game will play the winner of East Valley Yakima and Sela. Central Washington University students Derek Webb and David Lead were both named to the Great Northwest Athletic Conference baseball first team. 
According to Wildcat Sports, Webb led the team in batting and was named utility infielder. Lead, who played backup catcher, ranked second on the team in RBIs and was selected at, for the DH position. A total of 10 Wildcats were selected for the three conference teams. The Ellensburg High School tennis team will be well represented at this weekend's regional tournament. Doubles teams Nick Gigstead and Jeremy Tesk finished second in districts, while teammates Tim Hurston and Coleman Shebley placed third. On the girls' side of the court, Nath Nath Natalie Gruber finished second after upsetting the top seed earlier in the tournament. All five players will play for the chance to participate in the 2A state tournament over Memorial Day weekend. That's all for sports. Back to you. Since the return of Rivette, the Bulldogs have been the hottest team in the league. Rivette scorched Wapato in his first game back, draining five threes and 19 points. They have won eight out of the last nine games, including six in a row in the District 5-6 championship. Allie McQueenie may have lost her leg, but she did not lose her ambition towards powerlifting. After winning her fight for her life, she continued to challenge herself. It's a good challenge, and it like I love being challenged. I love being competitive and having something to fight for, and so it just is always challenging me, and it's always a struggle, so I don't know. I just love it. McQueenie's biggest challenge may be balancing herself when she lifts without her prosthetic leg, which is her only option. She started preparing four months prior to the USA Women's Powerlifting Nationals in Boise, Idaho, which happened last weekend. Three weeks ago, McQueenie tried to deadlift 195 pounds four times and failed to even budge it off the ground. McQueenie has been training this gym every week and hard work has paid off. She improved her deadlift 33 pounds since November to an astonishing 204 pounds. I've wanted to break 200 pounds for so long and so two weeks before I was like oh shoot I don't think I'm gonna get it and then when I got it and it came up so easily at the meet oh it was just an amazing feeling and I was just like ecstatic. 204 pounds. Yeah, 